Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Faith and I'm a full-time fashion reseller selling on apps like Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the step-by-step -step process on how to sell on Poshmark. I'll walk you through how to find items to sell, how to prep your items, list them, photograph them, how to get them sold, and of course, how to ship your items after they sell. If you guys find this content helpful, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed and that bell notification is push so you don't miss any more content with me. All right, let's get started. First off, you're going to want to gather all the items that you're looking to sell. Items that are from current seasons, that are in style and trending right now, and then also that are in great condition are definitely going to sell better than items that are from older styles and maybe have some flaws to them. So really make sure that you are being objective and trying to figure out what items are actually going to be worth listing and selling yourself and which items maybe would be better to hit the donation pile. During this process, definitely let go of that retail price that you paid for the item and understand that there is a resale market value of what the item is worth now and really adjust those expectations as you're going through these items and make sure that you're staying objective of what these clothing pieces might be worth right now on the resale market. The next thing you're going to want to do is to prep your items. So making sure that they are washed. If there is a stain on them that maybe you can get out, maybe put in some extra elbow grease to get that stain out so that it can sell for more money. And then what step that I personally love to do is to steam my items so there's no wrinkles and steaming actually does eliminate germs as well. So. I don't know about you, but I don't even own an iron anymore. Once I started reselling and I saw that other people were using steamers, I actually was blown away by the ease of use of a steamer and I will never again iron a piece of clothing. I do own a fairly heavy duty steamer. It's the Jiffy steamer. And I have this because I do this full time and I'm steaming a lot of clothing items and the tank size is much bigger. So it cuts down on the amount of trips I have to make to refill the tank when I'm steaming. However, if you are just looking to maybe sell a few things here and there from your closet or aren't really looking to make that big of an investment right now, I also highly recommend just getting a regular travel steamer like this. You definitely don't need a heavy duty steamer, but I highly recommend getting something like this, even if you aren't going to be reselling a lot of clothes very often. So the next step is photographing, and in my opinion, this is the most important step of the entire process. Your photographs are really what's going to sell the item. You want to make sure that your pictures are bright, they show the item with non-distracting background, and that they show the true color, any flaws, and just give the full picture so the buyer knows exactly what they are going to receive. Honestly, the pictures on Poshmark are not very good at all. So if you take even the smallest step to make your pictures look professional, you really are going to stand out and you're gonna not only sell your item faster, but you're going to sell it for even more money than maybe other people would on the app. So definitely make sure that if with all these steps, you are putting the most thought and attention into photographing. Now, please do not misunderstand what I'm saying here. I am most certainly not saying you need this huge professional setup for your pictures. You don't need a lighting kit. You don't need a digital camera. Literally all you need is natural light, a neutral background, and your phone. I have a light kit and I have a digital camera and I would never take the time to use those for my listings. It is so much more convenient just to open up a window, take a picture with your phone, and I do editing after the fact. I think it's way easier to edit the pictures on your phone than to have a whole like light set up and have to store those things in your house. So yes, your pictures are extremely important. They should look professional, but you don't need to be investing a ton of money or time into having the most extravagant lighting set up. So this right here is my lighting setup. I have it on a plain white wall and in a room that is definitely well lit. I have a lot of windows that let in a lot of natural light. Now my pants are hung up on like an actual nail that's drilled into a wall, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I highly recommend just using a clear command hook so that way you can remove it without causing any damage to your wall. Major tip for you guys, make sure that your camera is in square mode or the one-to-one -one ratio. That is going to make your life so 
much easier when you're importing your pictures to the listing. There are five pictures that I recommend you include in your listings and that you are keeping in mind as you're photographing each of your items. Having this list of five in your head is going to make your photographing process go super, super quick and making sure that you're not missing anything in the process. The first one is the front of the item. Second is the back of the item. Third is the brand tag, and typically the size tag is included in that same picture. The fourth one is the fabric tag so that the buyer knows the fabric contents. And then also the fifth picture, which is extremely important, is that you're photographing any flaws that might be on the item so that the buyer knows exactly what they are going to be receiving if they are to purchase your item. This process definitely makes photographing go so much quicker because I already know exactly what pictures I'm taking and in what order so I can really just keep things moving and it makes the whole process just go so much quicker when you have this list in your head. Okay, so now I'll walk you through how I edit my pictures. When you have just that natural light against a white background, editing the picture makes it look so much better than if it was a darker room or even if there was like some natural light and then you had harsh artificial light on top of it. I personally just think editing makes the pictures look so much better and honestly, I think it's easier than setting up an entire light whole system and you get all hot and bothered while you're taking pictures. This is just from personal experience what I recommend maybe, I don't know, something else will work for you. But the simplest, easiest way in my opinion if you want to go like bare minimum how to edit your pictures and you want to do it this way is to just open up the picture in your iPhone and hit edit. Now there's two things that I think you can really mess around with that can really help your pictures enhance them. The first one is the brilliance. So if you just increase the brilliance, you're going to see a huge improvement in the picture. Now if, especially for lighter items, if you want to increase the exposure a little bit, you could also do that. You might have to play around with it based off of your background. Everyone's lighting and background is going to be different. And then another thing that I found helps a lot when editing for darker items, I sell a lot of like black items or even navy blue. If you take down the shadows, that's going to restore that natural black color to the item. So definitely pay attention to the brilliance, exposure, and the shadow. And that, honestly, you can do all that just from the photo app in your phone. But if you want to take it up kind of a next step and you also are into editing maybe other types of pictures and using presets and whatnot, I highly recommend the Lightroom app. That's what I personally use for all of my uh, pictures, for Instagram, my YouTube thumbnails, and also for my listings. Also, like I was saying in the photo app, I use the exposure. I like to churn up the exposure. And then also for this picture, I turned up the whites, the, the white colors in the pictures. I turned those up a little bit. And then also for a darker item, you can take down the shadows and that's going to make sure that the background was lightened, but the item itself isn't washed out. So it's going to kind of restore the vibrancy in those darker colors in the clothing item. The Lightroom app is completely free. I don't have like affiliate or anything. It's just Adobe Lightroom. So I highly recommend that app. Uh, it makes it super easy to bulk edit pictures and then also just using presets. I absolutely love Lightroom and I use it for everything that I do. Shoes and bags are a little bit different. I do use a light box. For those items, I just found that it's so much easier when I do sell a lot of shoes. But if you are more of like a hobby seller trying to just sell things that you no longer wear, definitely just follow the same principles. Find a well-lit area that doesn't have a distracting background that just looks nice and not distracting and clean and tidy and that it's focusing on just the item, I think you definitely can just do it that way and then follow the exact same steps with the editing process and you should be good to go. So once you have the actual item photographed, you need to kind of decide from here if you are going to maybe model the item, if you're going to find a stock photo, or if you're just going to use the front picture that you took of the item as the cover photo. Now there are definitely pros and cons to each. If you do choose to model your item, I think this is a great way to sell items quickly and for even more money. I think 
Modeling is the best option out of all of these. However, it definitely takes the most time and it definitely a lot of people aren't comfortable with this. So certainly it is not required, but I have found that when you model your items, you tend to see them sell quicker and for more money because the buyer can actually see what it would look like on a real person, not a generated stock photo or on a professional model that doesn't maybe have a body type that a lot a lot or majority of people have so i think those are like the pros of modeling but certainly it is not necessary whatsoever you can choose to use stock photos now stock photos are technically not allowed because you are using another company's photographs for your own purposes there are companies that are very strict about this and will flag your listing and potentially have it removed if you use their stock photo, but I would say vast majority aren't having problems with this. So you have to kind of do use stock photos at your own risk. I use stock photos. When I first started, I used them all the time. That's all I used. And then I kind of decided to lean more towards modeling because of all of the benefits that I just mentioned. Plus you own the photo, so You don't have to worry about any copyright issues or anything like that. So that is another benefit of modeling. But Honestly, stock photos are used by a vast majority of people on these selling platforms, so you can choose to do that at your own risk. A big way that I use to find stock photos is honestly just typing in the style name of the item and then using the pictures that pop up. Or if I'm not sure of what the style name is and I can't find it online, I use the Google Lens app and that usually will find the item and find the stock photo or it will at least find the style name and then I can go back and type that into Google. So there are plenty of ways to find stock photos, but just make sure that you understand and all of the aspects of what goes into using stock photos. And then lastly, if you want to just use the front picture of the item, the picture that you just took, you certainly can do that. Just make sure that it is, like we already talked about, a well-lit and really great photograph that's going to show off the item. I think that there's nothing wrong with this. It does draw back on the fact that the buyer can't see how the item fits on a person, which might uh, hold some people back from purchasing. But honestly, again, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. A lot of people do it this way and see amazing sales. Just make sure that if you are choosing to go this route that you do have a really great picture as the cover. Okay, so we have our items photographed. Now we need to get them listed. This is another reason why I love taking pictures on my phone and not on a camera because I love listing on my phone and it's just way too much work to then import the pictures from my phone onto a laptop. I just like everything to be in one spot so I do all of my photographing and my listing on my phone but if you do prefer doing things on a desktop then you definitely can just import your pictures and save them as a draft and then continue on in your listing at the desktop version, but for this video, I'm just gonna do everything on mobile because that's how I would do it in real life. If you don't already have a Poshmark account, I do have a code down below and I do receive $10 for you signing up with my code. So it would really help support my channel if you do choose to do that, it's down below in the description. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is upload my photo. So I'm going to hit the cell icon with the camera and then hit the little photograph album on the bottom left corner. And then I'm going to select all of the pictures that I want to use for my listing. Now in this next part, you can choose to crop your images, but because you took your pictures in square mode, you don't need to do this. It's already set up for you, which is why I suggested doing it that way. So now you can just hit next because all your pictures are ready. Select your cover shot. I mean, you can do this after the fact. You can drag and drop um, any picture that you want. Hit next, edit. Do not edit your pictures here. Just please promise me right now you will never use any of these edits right now. Okay, thank you. So we got your front of the pants, back of the pants. Um, I typically then do the brand tag and then the fabric tag and then any flaws. If you want to add more pictures, you certainly can. This is just typically what I do to keep it simple. Okay, so next we're going to want to add our title. So the title is super important because that is the SEO of your item. So the search engine optimization, which means that this listing can pop up 
when buyers are searching for your item based off of the keywords that you include. So if buyers are looking, for example, a Lululemon Align Leggings uh, 28 inch inseam. So if someone's typing that in, you wanna make sure that you have all those keywords in your listing so that your item pops up to match that, what they're typing in. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you have all those key keywords in your title and in your description. So a good place to start maybe if you're not sure what to include. If you ever also, side note, if you ever want to go back into the app and you don't wanna lose what you're doing, you can just hit cancel and then save drafts. And that's going to save all of your drafts so you can kind of go back and forth as you're working. So for uh, example, I actually need to look up these pants that I'm photographing. So I'll show you kind of how I do research to figure out keywords, style names, and also find uh, pictures if I need to. So for these, these are Uncle Studios uh, cargo pants. Let's see what pops up. I'm gonna wanna remove my size because they're not my size. And here we are. So they didn't include the style name, but they do have some awesome stock photos. So I'm just going to screenshot those and I'm going to add those into my listing. I also saw a couple of stock photos right here that I enjoyed. Another thing I'm looking for, if you forgot how much you paid for your item, how much it retailed for, I'm looking up how much that the item retails for so that I know. And then I'm also looking up what sizes are currently available and what they are pricing their pants at for the available listings. And then I'm also going to look at the sold listings to see which of these pants have sold and for how much so that I can get a good idea of how much that I want to price these for. So I wasn't able to find an exact style name, but that's okay. If you can't find something, you need to just move on and it's okay. Just try your best to find all the things possible. Here's my listing. I'm going to add the stock photos that I just found. This is, I'm gonna type in the title. So Uncle Studios. I usually start with the brand, the style name, descripting features, and then the category. If it's like pants, dress, that kind of thing. So I'll do Uncle Studios, tan, cargo, straight leg, pants, size, medium. I think that's going to be my title. And then what I like to do is I copy my title and then I paste that as the first line as the description to really reinforce that SEO that I'm trying to set up for my listing. Now I go into adding any descripting features that people might be searching for. So I'm going to add button fly, probably straight leg again, cargo, trouser, use a bunch of different names that might pop up for when people are searching. And then I'm also going to make sure that I am including the flaws that are on the item. And I can also include measurements if I wish in this part. I typically do include measurements for pants just because I think pants are a little bit trickier, but I certainly don't include listings for everything. I know that's kind of you can choose whether or not you want to do that. Uh, there's pros, pros and cons to definitely both sides of it. So I'll go ahead and I'll finish up this description and check back in with you. Okay, I did my description. Now I'm going to fill in these categories here. They are super straightforward. I don't really think I need to walk through these with you. So I'll just go ahead and do these real quick. If your brand doesn't pop up, maybe it's a brand that isn't very well known, you can actually add it to uh, Poshmark. So that way it will be recognized as a keyword in search as well. So uh, it's definitely important to do it that way uh, when you're doing your listing. Now for the style tags, I think these are incredibly important again for search. Search is how your item is going to get found by buyers. So definitely don't underestimate the power of these keywords and these style tags. So for these pants, I'll be honest, I'm not the best at style tags and coming up with them, but I do think it's extremely important. So I'm gonna do cargo because I wasn't able to type or select cargo pants as the type of pants I could just do straight leg. So I'm going to select cargo. Uh, I'm going to do neutral because I think neutral 
toned clothing it's definitely trendy right now and then for the last one i'm going to do casual so the original retail price is 135 um, sometimes Poshmark will give you a suggested listing price. If they do and I'm unsure or if I was a beginner, I would definitely price it on the higher end. So I would actually price it with, as the, the highest number that they give you. But I certainly would recommend doing your own research and pricing it based off of what you find on how much uh, the items are being listed for that are available, if there's any items that are in your size based off of the condition of your item, and then also based off of how much items are selling for. Definitely, I say shoot higher than even realistic or lower. Definitely shoot high within reason because you're going to want to be sending out offers, which we'll talk about later on, and also Poshmark takes a 20% fee. So, and other people are going to give you offers, which might be lowball offers. We'll talk about all that later on, but in this pricing section, definitely shoot higher than what you would expect, but be realistic because nothing turns buyers off than a completely unrealistic price. So looking back, I see that there is already a medium in these pants listed however this person hasn't shared this item since october 30th now we'll get into sharing also in a little bit but because this person's not actively sharing their their item and they're not active on poshmark i think that i do stand a good chance at selling these my pair of pants over hers so i'm actually going to price them the exact same amount that she priced hers instead of trying to undercut her or even go above her i think i'm just going to do the exact same and hopefully someone chooses is my pair of pants over her pair. So then you're just gonna hit next and list. And there you go, let's check it out. So now you'll see that your item is listed. All right, let's talk about how you're going to get your items sold. So we're going to talk about sharing your items, sending offers and receiving offers, bundle offers, and then also a closet clear out. All of these are strategies that you can and should use to get your items sold on Poshmark. So first let's kind of talk about how the app works because that's really going to help you get a deeper understanding of how you're going to make sales. So Poshmark is a quote unquote social platform. The platform really wants to encourage community and sharing other people's items, sharing your own items, uh, giving posh love, you might hear that term. Honestly, all of these cringy buzzwords are a bunch of baloney and you should not be reading into this at all. Poshmark just wants you to spend as much time possible on their app because that is how they are going to get investments and now that the company has gone public, that is what their stakeholders really care about is the amount of time spent on the app because in their eyes hopefully time spent on the app equals more sellers making sales and more buyers making purchases so definitely do not feed into this load of garbage there are things that you can do that are worth your time your time is the most important thing here not appeasing Poshmark so here's the things that you are going to do buyers are buying from the search bar they are typing in brands items, styles that they are specifically seeking out, okay? They are not buying from the home feed that you see when you open the app. Just trust me, no one is doing that. So this is the important thing to understand about how your items are going to be appearing in search. So when you share your item, whether that is sharing your item to your followers or sharing your own item to parties, that is going to boost your item in search. It's going to show up as just shared. Again, this is how things are currently. I don't know if they'll be making changes in the future. They have been experimenting with different changes. So definitely make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you can keep up to date if there are any changes in how the algorithm works. But but currently how it stands is items when they are shared show up 
first in search results. So that is huge for you. If you are sharing your items consistently, that means that they are going to get the most eyeballs on them and they're going to increase your chances of making a sale. Now, you are going to see a lot of people doing community share. So they are going to share your item and Poshmark is going to suggest to you to say thank you to them for sharing your item and to share their item back and to show Posh love. However, the sad fact is that when you share someone else's item, it does diddly squat for them, okay? It does not increase their item in search rankings at all. So even though it's a nice gesture, it is a colossal waste of time. So thank you to anyone who has ever shared my items if you are a returning visitor to this video. Thank you, but seriously stop. Stop for your own good, okay? It is a waste of time. It is not beneficial to anyone. It's not beneficial to you for your time or to them and their listing. So just don't do it, okay? So now let's talk about parties. You do not need to join these Poshmark parties in order to make sales. It is perfectly good and acceptable to share to these parties, but you don't need to be like joining these parties right when they are and to be like participating in them. That is not going to increase your sales, I promise you. All you need to do is making sure that you are sharing your items and that is the best thing that you're going to do with your time, okay? So don't, you can share your items to these parties. It That also, adds your item to the top of search. However, you don't need to be like at these parties and participating in them in that way. Another thing you absolutely do not need to do is commenting on other people's posts when they are a host pick. Host pick doesn't really mean anything. Honestly, I've been a host pick. I can't even count how many times and it does not, it has not resulted in a single sale. I've never had a host pick item sell at a party. So just, Again, I get very fired up about this. Just please do not buy into the host picks, commenting on other people's stuff, congratulating them on that, sharing their closet, joining these parties. You don't need to do any of it. Just share your own items. Okay, second most important is sending out offers. Now, I think sending offers, again, along with sharing, those are pretty much the only two things that I do out of this whole entire list that I'm going to share with you. I think number one, sharing. Number two is sending out offers. Now, how steep of an offer is totally up to you. What I do is I send out a 10% offer with $4.99 shipping right after the person likes your item. Now, I personally do use automation. I use a free sharing tool by Flip and that helps me share my closet automatically so I don't need to go through and share each individual item. Now, if you only have a couple of items, maybe it's not very bothersome to you to manually share your closet. If you only have a few listings, then it might not matter to you. But if you are looking to maybe get getting into to selling on Poshmark or you have you're gonna list a ton of items I definitely recommend using an automation tool like this it's completely free if you sign up I do have a link down below you will be added to a wait list and then you will be approved and you can start using this tool to share your closet it sends out automatic offers so for me it sends out a 10% um, offer 10 minutes after a person likes an item. And I also can send out bulk offers if I wanna send out a steeper discount to uh, my all of the people who have liked items in my closet. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this tool. But if you're only listing like one or two, three items, then maybe it's totally within your time scope to be able to do this stuff manually. But just wanna throw that out there if you're looking to take this uh, a little more seriously than like three items. Going back to the conversation of sending out offers, if you do want to send out another offer, you have to make sure that the offer is 10% more discounted than the previous offer. So if you're just sending out 10% offers right away, you want to make sure that the next offer that you send out is 20% off. Otherwise, the likers in your closet aren't going to receive your offer. The buyer does pay for shipping. So when you are sending out a shipping discount, that money is deducted from your earnings. I personally do decide to just send a shipping discount because the shipping is pretty high for a single item. But again, totally up to you how you wanna do it. There's no really right away like that you can do it. It totally is up to like what you're selling and kind of how you wanna use the app. 
but that is just how I do and I think it's something that you definitely is important to understand that that shipping discount is coming out of your earnings. When a liker sends you an offer, that means that the buyer is completely going to cover the shipping so you don't have to worry about the shipping discount. The only time a discount is applied and taken from your earnings is when you send the offer. The majority of sales that I make is from buyers making offers to me and me sending out offers. So this is a huge component and definitely something to keep in mind when you're pricing your item. Definitely make sure that you are accounting for the offers that you are going to send or that you could potentially receive. So those are the two primary sales tools that you can use. Another one that you can use if you have the time to do it is you could create a bundle for a liker. If a liker comes to your closet and likes multiple items, you can go in to their profile, switch to the sell view, and then add the items to their shopping cart that they had liked from your closet and then make them a offer. Now, honestly, buyers love to lowball you on these bundles, but if you stay strong and try to negotiate them, hopefully you will both benefit from a great bundle deal. So this is something that you can utilize. I definitely recommend messaging the buyer. Sometimes I just say, uh, hi, and I can like maybe see their first name from their profile. So I'll say like, hi, so-and-so, thanks for checking out my closet. I love these items. I just sent you a discounted offer with discounted or free shipping. Do you have any questions for me? And then I sign it, Faith. I love to add this last like question. Do you have any questions for me? Because then it kind of introduces the idea of a conversation and maybe if they aren't okay with something, I can address it or we can discuss the price. And I think it's just a great way to get your buyer's attention because that way if you leave a comment they are going to get notification on their phone and it will hopefully just get that attention on these items that you need to make a sale. And then lastly there is this thing called closet clear out that happens every so often you'll see when it's going on in the banner on top of the news page it'll tell you clear, closet clear out is going on. There are a ton of videos on YouTube that uh, kind of go into closet clear out strategies. I truth truthfully don't don't use this feature very often. What I usually use it for is to reduce the price on items that I am about to relist, which is something we haven't even talked about, but you go into your Poshmark platform on the desktop and then you click your inventory. They will send you a list of your inventory and inventory report and you'll be able to see how many days your item has been listed. Items that have been listed for 60 days or older, you can choose to relist them. So when you relist an item, it generates a new listing, it makes it a fresh listing, and it's going to be uh, tagged or clarified as just in, which means it's going to pop up higher in search. So it's definitely beneficial to do this and it gives it kind of just like a facelift on your closet. So you can hit copy listing, make sure that you remove that copy from the title. You can make any adjustments if needed. Maybe you need better pictures, you need to beef up the description. Maybe you need to adjust the price a little bit. You can do all of that here and then you can go ahead and list it and then make sure you delete the old listing so that you don't have duplicates. This is a great strategy to make sure that your closet is up to date and when things are kind of getting stale, relisting can definitely help. Once you make your first sale, you are going to ship your item, which may sound daunting, but honestly, Poshmark is by far the easiest platform to do shipping on. So I'll walk you through really quick how you're going to do it. Honestly, it's so simple. I'm going to be doing this on the desktop version because I need to connect to my printer. So you're going to want to click right here. You're going to go to my sales and then you're going to see all your sales here. Now I just did all of my shipping so I don't have any uh, like available items for me to download a shipping label for. Typically there would just be a little box icon here and you check that and then you'd hit print. But what you can also do if you have multiple sales you need to print out, you can do the actions 
and then click download shipping labels and then select all and then all your labels are going to select and you can print them all out at the same time which is incredibly helpful and saves you a lot of time also what you can do is you can find this shipping label sent directly to your email address and you can print it out straight from the email that they send you which might be extremely easy for you and you don't even have to log into Poshmark so I'll show you what that looks like here so here's the email that Poshmark is going to send you they'll send you all the directions that you need and then in the attachment there's going to be a PDF with the label and then you're just going to open that out and print it you can print this out just on a regular printer on a piece of paper I personally use a label printer because I do a lot of shipping and shipping on these labels so that way I can just peel off the back and stick it on the package but you can definitely just use a regular piece of paper cut it out and use tape to tape it on the package so once you have your label printed and you're all ready to go there are a couple of things that you can use for shipping. Now, a huge thing that I recommend are these free USPS boxes. There's a ton of different sizes for them. There's mailers. These are completely free directly from the US Post Office. You just Google free shipping supplies USPS and it will pop up for you. I can try to find a link also and put that in the description. These will take a little bit to come in, so make sure that you're order, ordering these in advance before you make the sale. Also, what you can use if you don't have these handy or in time, you can reuse Amazon boxes, Amazon mailers, any other box that you have received from ordering something for yourself, you can certainly repurpose. Something else that you can choose to use is you can purchase poly mailers from Amazon. So I have these bigger ones for larger items. And then I also have some more like fun colorful ones. I can link all the ones that I use in the description. These ones are definitely my favorite. They're really high quality and I love the pattern on them. And then as far as how you're going to package up your item, I definitely recommend either wrapping it maybe in tissue paper or craft paper here. Or what I personally love to use are these clear bags. They are not rigid at all. They're super flexible, which I love. They don't make that horrible crinkly noise. And I slip the item into this to protect it from any water damage or any damage along the way. And then I put it into the mailer and then I put my label on the mailer and then I drop it off at the post office and I'm good to go. So there are a couple different levels of what you can do if you're looking to do a lot of selling on Poshmark. I definitely re recommend investing in some more shipping supplies, but if not, you can definitely reuse some of the old stuff that you have lying around your house. Just make sure your item looks nice and that it's protected inside the packaging so that it doesn't get damaged on the way to the buyer's house. You can drop your item off at the post office or if you don't have one near you actually, UPS does accept USPS packages, but uh, just definitely look into that before you drop it off because they can't give you a receipt. However, uh, USPS can give you a receipt and it tracks right when you uh, drop it off at the counter. So there are pros and cons for both, but if you do need the option to drop it at UPS, some of them do accept uh, USPS mail. So your item is going to be delivered anywhere from one to three days typically. Sometimes it does take longer if there's delays, especially nowadays, but typically it's going to be around that two to three day mark once your item is delivered, your buyer is going to accept the item and they're going to give you a rating. Once your item is accepted, your funds are going to be released to you and you can add your bank information and you can get your money direct deposited straight into your account. Your uh, ratings are not public. However, if your buyer leaves you a love note or positive feedback about your experience that will be made public on your account for other people to see. This process is extremely easy and if anything goes wrong throughout the process, Poshmark is going to protect you and have your back if there is any fraudulent behavior, any scamming or anything like that, which really does not happen. Like don't let that turn you off at all. It's something that rarely occurs, but if it does, Poshmark will definitely make sure that you are receiving your funds no matter what and they definitely have the reputation of taking care of their buyers and their sellers so definitely you don't have to worry about anything going on it's very uh, that's kind of the least amount of risk I would say as far as any selling platform goes 
but certainly even with all platforms you hear maybe about bad stories but I promise you that's definitely not the majority of the experience and for the most part these things go extremely smoothly and you have nothing to worry about. If you guys have any questions please make sure to leave them down below and I will definitely try my best to answer all of them. Thank you so much if you learned something new please make sure that you hit the thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. I have a lot of other reselling content available if you're interested in learning more. So thank you guys so much again and I'll see you guys next week.